everyone and welcome to Leaping Mabel's Closet. My name's Jane. So today's video is a little tutorial on how to use your scraps up and make these cute little padded coasters. Soon be Christmas, we all sometimes need to find last minute gifts or maybe little stocking fillers and these are just the perfect cutest things. So please stay tuned and I'm going to take you through a really easy tutorial, use it with scraps and have these made in no time at all. So if you need some last minute gift inspiration ideas, this is ideal. So please stay tuned. So I've chosen this gorgeous floral print that I had scraps of, obviously, and I've cut them into squares, five inch squares. And I'm making a set of four coasters, so obviously I need eight squares of fabric. And obviously they're gonna be in pairs. And I've chosen two different fabrics, so two contrasting fabrics to make mine. But you can use any fabrics. So just quickly give them a press because obviously they've come out the scrap box and they're always creased. And I'm just using some cotton batting to quilt my coasters with, but you could just use wadding as well. And I'm just literally going to place one of the coasters on top of the batting leaving a little bit on the edge because as you quilt the fabric just tend to shift a little bit so I just left a little bit on the edge and obviously I'm going to repeat that for the remaining three coasters so just need a layer of batting for each coaster And now they're ready to sew. So obviously I've got two pieces of fabric for each coaster and a piece of wadding. So we're gonna lay the piece of fabric, one of the pieces of fabric, wrong sides down onto the wadding, so right side up, and do that for all four coasters. So we're gonna leave one piece off and just use the other piece to quilt. We're only gonna quilt the one side of the coasters. So I'm just pinning the pieces together there and leaving the bottom pieces separate and obviously make sure I've got right side up so I always want the right side up and pin in place now we're just going to go to the machine and we are going to start some quilting and Obviously, we don't need to do anything with the back pieces as yet, so we're going to leave them to one side. And I just need to pick a nice contrasting cotton and probably a nice pale pink should be perfect. So I'm just going to thread my machine up and get ready to sew. So I'm just placing my footer along the edge of the fabric as a guide and I'm just going to stitch with quite a long stitch. I think I've got mine on number three or four and just stitch one row there as a guide and then literally I'm just going to use that row of stitching as my next guide and just place my footer on the edge of that stitching line and just literally stitch along and repeat this all the way along each coaster so really simple so you don't need to worry about guiding because you've got your line of stitching there to help you to keep it lovely and straight. So I've just got the last row to go and I'm just literally lining my foot upon that last row of stitching and just finishing off this first coaster. 
and that's how that looks first set of rows on there and there's the back so I'm just going to repeat that now on the remaining three coasters just line up my first footer on the edge of the fabric and just use that guide to continue on And I absolutely love my new sewing table overlooking the garden. It's just so lovely. I've got the natural light from the window and I can watch the birds and oh, it's just so lovely. Really do enjoy sitting here now. And obviously my bobbin ran out of thread. Doesn't that always happen? So I just needed to quickly thread my bobbin again. And here is a close-up of where I'm placing my foot, just in case you couldn't see. I'm lining my foot up against that line of stitching there, you can see. And I'm just using that as my guide to stitch all the way along. And I'm using a fairly long length stitch, as I said before. But that's purely optional. You can use your normal stitch length if you want, but I just like that extra longer stitch. And it does make it a lot quicker to sew too. So there they all are done, looking good so far. So now we're going to turn them around and we're going to do some more stitching the other way across the coaster. So literally exactly the same as we did for the first set of stitching. We're just going to line up our foot against the edge of the fabric there as our marker line and repeat what we've just done. But we're going crisscross across now to give you that lovely crisscross effect. And that's how it looks when you've completed both rows of stitching. I love that effect it gives, that lovely quilted effect. And now obviously you're going to repeat that on the remaining three coasters. So that's how it looks on the back. And a bit closer on the front. Just love the effect it gives, really lovely quilted effect. So I've finished all four coasters now and I just need to now pin the back part of the coaster down onto the front part of the coaster so with the right sides facing place your back of your coaster on top of the quilted fabric not the batting the quilted fabric so it's right sides together so you're creating a sandwich so the batting should be underneath and your two fabrics for your coaster should be on the top just like I've got in the picture there. So I'll pin them all together and we're going to stitch all the way down one centimetre seam allowance and leave a little bit of an opening so we can turn the coasters through. And obviously we're going to do that for all four of the coasters. So pin them in place, make sure you've got right sides together and the batting or your wadding that you're using is at the bottom of the coaster and pin in place to secure. I'm just gonna go over to the machine and as I said, stitch with one centimeter seam allowance. There you can see the battens on the bottom and the two fabrics are sandwiched together. And we're just gonna leave a little bit of an opening and stitch them together. One centimeter seam allowance. And just stitch the coasters together using your footer again along the edge of the fabric. Really simple project to do. And then just leave a little opening so you can turn it all through. Take the pins out and I'll just show you what it looks like when they're all stitched. So you can see how they should look now. And I'm just going to trim the corners with my rotary cutter just to reduce that bulk and then trim the edges of the three sides but I like to leave the bulk of the fabric on the side that I've got my opening just so there's plenty of it to tuck in. I'm just going to trim that batting away 
but just so there's plenty to tuck in when we turn it through, press it, and obviously you need to top stitch it closed. So I'm just going to turn them through. And I've just got a little bit of a like a crocheting hook to poke the corners out so they're lovely and neat. And then just going to give it a quick little press, make sure I've got that seam allowance tucked in lovely and neat on both sides. A little bit of a press and repeat that for all four courses. And as you can see there, I've just got that little bit of opening and I'm just going to stitch it at the machine closed, just like you can see there. And I'll show you a little close up of what I mean on the machine. Just give it another press. And how neat and lovely is that? Absolutely love this little project. My daughter's going to love this set of coasters. So obviously I'm just going to trim all these remaining three, just like I did with that one, turn them all through. Make sure the corners are nicely poked out and neat and give them all a nice press ready to take to the machine and top stitch that opening closed. So they're all ready, they're all pressed, turned through, ready to be stitched closed. So on the machine, just want to show you quickly, I just literally popped my foot right against the edge just so I could top stitch that gap closed so it turns out nice and neat, but it just catches both sides and trim the cotton off and basically that is your coaster. Lovely set of four coasters. So I hope you enjoyed today's little video tutorial. I just thought, you know, we all need a little bit of inspiration at this time of year. Sometimes we need a little bit of a last minute gift. You've always got fabric scraps hanging around and these are absolutely ideal to use your scraps. So I hate throwing scraps away and if I can get things made with them, well, it's a win-win, isn't it? So obviously I've made this gorgeous little pretty floral set that you saw me make in the tutorial. And these are earmapped for my daughter for her bedroom. Her bedroom's all pink and girly and floral. She's gonna love these. And obviously the padded, the quilted, so fairly heat resistant too. And obviously I just bundled them together in a little bit of string, but obviously you could wrap them in ribbon or anything like that. And I just think they're the cutest thing. She's going to love them. I mean, how cute are they? A little pack. So obviously I've made a little pack of four for her and obviously you could make six. So I hope you enjoyed today's little tutorial. I thought I'd sneak it in there for you. And I've got a couple more tutorials, last minute gift ideas coming your way that uses up your fabric scraps. So stay tuned for those. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, don't forget to give me that lovely thumbs up. And if you do manage to make any, I would love it if you could share your photos on Instagram using the hashtag Loopy Mabel's Closet. I would love to see what you make. And that's it for today's video. So watch out for a few more tutorials coming your way and all the usual shenanigans on my channel. And um, yeah, I shall see you very soon. Please take care and happy scrappy sewing.